He was original Polaroid <laughs> <laughs> from 1986. Good old this Polaroid. Is a, and this is in front of the, my garden. Right, that's here in front of your mom's house. And, uh, and we spent time there today. So that's been the weirdest thing for me, is to come back after all these years. And where do we spend time? In my old neighborhood. Yeah, Jennifer and I met in 1986. We'd actually lived in the same neighborhood. We went to the same junior high. We didn't know each other then. We really met in high school. And we dated in high school. Long about that time, we figured out that we liked some of the same things. And this is gonna come. Uh, full circle later on, we're uh, much older, and when we meet again uh, to date as adults, we're doing the exact same things. We were in the same jewelry art class together, and Dave was very interesting already from the very beginning. He's different than other high school boys. He would be personable. He would maybe show you how to do something or demonstrate something he was doing. And so he had this sort of inviting way about himself, and it was very attractive. Let's start kind of being in areas where I knew he'd be by, where his classes would be by, I'd happen to be by them. And then I had a very good friend, Jenny, and she finally saw us together and Dave made some comment and she said, don't you get it? She likes you. This right here, this is the hallway where I remember talking to you for the very first time. Then Dave came up to me and said, do you like me? I said, well, yeah, kind of, yeah. <laughs> and then he said, okay, do you want to go out on a date? Okay, yeah, I'd like to go out on a date. <laughs> When we started dating, I also convinced him to go to his junior prom. For smiling and laughing. I was very happy you took me to the prom. Well, you were a pretty cute date, I'll tell you what. After high school, I went off to the Navy, but I did keep in touch um, to our high school mentor. So as I started traveling, uh, and visiting these great places, I would send postcards back to him. Well, he would send, he would share these postcards uh, with Jennifer. So Jennifer, from time to time, got to hear uh, what I was doing and where I was. In 2016, I saw on Facebook that Dave was moving away from Arizona and found a role in the Bay Area. The first thing he wanted to do was join our San Francisco Gem and Mineral Club, which I've been a member for over 25 years. Then we, he asked me over for dinner. And not only did he cook me dinner, he had candlelight and music. And then at the end of the night, he held my coat, which I thought was just a very nice gesture. And so then the next day at work, I wrote him a note, you know, via Facebook, has how we kept in touch at that point. And I said, um, you know, thank you for the home cooked meal. And he said, oh, thank you for coming over. You warmed my house and my heart. And I go, ooh, and I thought, okay, maybe there might be something here. It had been pretty clear for some time that uh, the way Jennifer and I lived life together, the way we were spending our time together, and how I felt about her meant that uh, this was gonna be my best chance at a great wife, at a great marriage. And so that was building up for quite some time, and then I decided this is the day. So between deciding that this was the day and actually proposing was less than a day, and decided I needed to make the engagement ring that very day. So I hit the jewelry bench and started to make that ring. It was the hardest piece that I may have ever made. I love to make jewelry and I'm pretty good at it. This piece though, I made every mistake that I've ever made and I made some of them twice. I burned myself, I ruined some metal, I bent some stuff up. It was the hardest piece that I think I've made for years and it must have been all the nerves and how meaningful this piece was. So it's done towards the end of the day and I put it in my pocket and I get in my car and I drive over to Jennifer's. And I said, come on, you need to come for a drive with me. And she'd been having some kind of awful day. And she says, 
I, I ordered a pizza and I said, it doesn't matter. Never mind. Ignore that. So we got in the car and I drove down to uh, Ocean Beach. So we walked down towards the water and before she knows it, I'm down on one knee and I'm holding up this ring and she freaked out. She couldn't believe it happened. She never saw it coming. It was absolutely the best proposal I could have imagined. I, David. I, David. Take you, Jennifer. Take you, Jennifer. To be my wife. To be my wife. In everlasting faithfulness. In everlasting faithfulness. From this day forward. From this day forward. I promise to be. Promise to your faithful partner. Your faithful partner. In sickness and in health. In, health. in good times. In good times. And in bad. And bad. In joy. In joy. And in sorrow. And in sorrow. I will be. I will be your constant friend. Your constant friend. As you are mine. As you are mine. I will love you. I will love you. Honor you. Honor you. Uphold and sustain you. Uphold and sustain you. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow to you. To you. For all the days of my life. For all the days of my life. Jen, around the same time, Dad moved back to San Francisco, and uh, I liked her right away. The best thing I liked about her is that how he made my dad uh, feel. When he looked at him, he's just a lot happier. Everybody's a lot better off now that this whole thing's going on. I'm so happy to be here to see my cousin grow up over all these years and I know your dad is looking down right now and he's so proud of the woman that you have become.